Welcome to the Living Well Beyond Cancer Survivor Series. Today's topic is, let's talk about sex and cancer. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, everyone. My name is Hillary Henricks, and I am a physical therapist that specializes in cancer rehabilitation, pelvic health, and lymphedema. I am also the Revital Cancer Rehabilitation Program Director at SSM Health Physical Therapy in the Metro St. Louis area. I was so happy to be invited to speak today on sexual function for the cancer survivor. Cancer is a journey, and we recognize not everyone's path is the same. Everyone starts in a different place. Your age, your beliefs, your support system of family and friends, your general health or well being, among other factors that contribute to where you are at the beginning. Also, your destination may be different. Where are you going? Is your destination finishing treatment and putting cancer behind you? Is it living with a chronic condition, managing side effects to lead as normal and independent life as possible? Your destination is determined by the goals set between you and your medical team. Once diagnosed with cancer, your path may take you through different treatment choices, surgery, chemotherapy, targeted therapy, radiation are all customized by your cancer care team to meet your needs and get you to your destination. With this specialized treatment, each person's side effects and intensity of the side effects will vary as well. The tolerance to treatment will be impacted by your general well being and where you started at diagnosis. Our team wants to help keep your motor running smoothly throughout your experience to your destination. While sexual health is a component of overall health and is important, it is less often discussed. My primary hope for this presentation is that survivors, partners, and healthcare providers will walk away today feeling more comfortable and confident discussing sex as it pertains to the cancer experience. As we walk through this together, it's important to recognize that this information will feel different to each of you. And there are no expectations for how you should or shouldn't be experiencing sexual health. I hope that this conversation will improve the awareness of changes in your sexual health, available support, and how to be a self-advocate for your personal needs. As defined by the American Cancer Society, sexuality refers to how people express themselves in a sexual way. It includes how they see, feel, and think about themselves as a sexual being, and the ways they show it through their actions, behaviors, and relationships. Those diagnosed with cancer or undergoing treatment face a lot of change. Physical, emotional, hormonal, psychological, financial, just to name a few. If those changes lead to difficulty with how you would like to express yourself sexually, sexual function, or feel sexually fulfilled, it may be considered sexual dysfunction. The good news is there is a lot of opportunity to improve sexual dysfunction. And the best way to reach your potential is to start the conversation with your medical team if it hasn't already been initiated. As a pelvic health therapist and cancer rehabilitation specialist, I have had the privilege of working with the cancer community to assist in reaching their sexual function goals. For today's presentation, my clinical expertise will focus on more of the physical barriers that may impact sexual health while highlighting other professionals and resources that may assist in other aspects of sexual health. It is important to note that when I say sexual health or sexuality, that doesn't necessarily mean the act of sex. While sex can be a component of sexual health, it's just that, a component. People can be intimate or sexual in many ways without leading to sex at all. Sexual health and sexuality is influenced by many variables for all individuals, not just those with cancer. Specific to the cancer experience, with treatments such as surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, or hormonal treatments, you may feel physically different. Tissues or sensation may have changed. Natural lubrication may be different. You may have pain or weakness that limits your mobility or comfort with things that you previously enjoyed sexually. Additionally, body image, mental health, changes in your routines or level of support, and overall well being can influence how you feel about your sexuality. So, if I should expect changes, what should I expect? Expect to keep the conversation going. Things will look different across the continuum based on your specific diagnosis and planned treatments, and that's okay. Start the conversation early about expectations and how you can safely participate in sexual health. That way, if you want to participate in practices that have historically given you fulfillment, 
you can feel confident on how to keep yourself and your partner safe. Remember that even without sexual intercourse, the physical act of touch or other aspects of intimacy may still be fulfilling options to be intimate or sexual. Your path through treatment is your own, and so is your sexual health. The more clarity you have on sexual expectations and safety along the road will help to make sure that you're not making assumptions. Rather, you can make informed decisions in confidence about what's best for you. So for examples along the way, before treatment, if you have any questions about fertility or childbearing, bring these up so that you can have clear expectations and plan for what feels best to you and your care team. Safe sex practices should be outlined before and throughout treatment. Precautions and practices will vary based on your specific plan of care. So for example, if your treatment plan puts you at risk for infection, your doctor may instruct you to wear condoms for vaginal intercourse. Or if you have surgery, there may be a period of time after that you will need to abstain from certain sexual activities to not stress the healing tissues. After cancer treatment, if you are not satisfied with your sexual function, don't assume that it's your new normal. Without clinical evaluation of your specific course of treatment and presentation, you won't know about all of the resources available to help you reach your potential. Changes in libido or arousal is something that many of my patients have expressed as a concern. There are a lot of variables that may contribute to this. For example, in the physical landscape, my expertise, I often see patients who have low libido that is heavily influenced by pain or fear of pain. If you have pain or fear of pain with movement or activities associated with your sexual health, it would be weird if your desire for sexual activity wasn't affected. Addressing the underlying cause of the pain and working on healing the tissue issues that are involved would be essential in helping you to reach your goals. Changes in arousal and libido are common from diagnosis through treatment and beyond. Variables from the physical, hormonal, relational, psychosocial, to name a few, can affect how you feel. It's important to know that changes in sexual desire are common and not something you should be afraid to discuss with your partner or your medical team. Speaking of partners, sex, sexuality, intimacy, and sexual desire are important conversations to have with your partner. I will often have partners attend therapy sessions to support the survivor, but also to improve their understanding of how sex and cancer are related. Involving partners in discussions with counselors, sex therapists, rehab specialists, and your healthcare team will not only improve your communication with them, but also help you to identify their own expectations and opportunities to support you. A sex therapist is an excellent resource to help address libido, intimacy, and sexual health goals. So what does a physical or occupational therapist have to do with sex on the multidisciplinary team? As a cancer rehabilitation therapist, our primary focus is function and quality of life and your ability to perform your activities of daily living. Sex is an activity of daily living. So discussing your concerns with your physical or occupational therapist will help them determine how they can assist, whether with positional modifications for comfort, improving activity tolerance, reducing fatigue, or referring you to another specialist, such as a pelvic floor therapist. Just as you would talk with your cancer rehab therapist about logistics and strategies to continue to work, pick up your grandchildren, or exercise safely throughout treatment, you can and should discuss the functional requirements and goals you have related to your sexual health preferences. As a pelvic floor or pelvic health physical therapist, I can tell you that I was shocked when I was evaluating patient resources for support and did not see pelvic floor or pelvic health therapist listed on available cancer community resource lists for sexual health. I think primarily the reason is that there's a lack of education and awareness of how we work with cancer survivors, and it's important that you know. So just as a doctor can specialize in women's health or male pelvic health, physical and occupational therapists can also specialize in the muscles at the bottom of the pelvis called the pelvic floor. These providers regularly perform vaginal and rectal examinations and treatments to target the inside and outside muscles and how they relate to your symptoms. A pelvic health therapist is an amazing resource, specifically for survivors who may experience pelvic pain. This can be related to hormonal changes or treatment, post-surgical or radiation pain or other causes and may extend into your back, hips. 
if you have pain or tightness with physical touch or activity on the outside or inside of the vagina, anus, or rectum. If you have changes in your ability to achieve or maintain an erection. Or those with difficulty controlling their bowel or bladder function. So what might pelvic health therapy include? Sexual position modifications, pain management, breathing and relaxation exercises, strategies for gradual progression towards your sexual function goals. So your therapist can help break down the activities that, that you hope to resume in smaller pieces so that you can work on comfort and confidence with different elements until you're ready for, to put them together if you want to. Pelvic floor exercises, not just kegels, external or internal hands-on treatment. This is only performed with your consent and if you feel comfortable with this as part of your treatment plan. I have worked with many patients who have found this to be very beneficial and others who did not want internal examination or treatment as part of their care plan at all. Either way is absolutely fine. It's just important that you know how internal work is a skill set that pelvic health therapists have available based on comfort and need. Many of my patients have shared that sometimes non-sexual side effects of their treatment, such as urinary or bowel leakage, also limit how confident or interested they feel in being intimate. A pelvic health therapist can help you gain control over your bowel and bladder. A home exercise program is essential for you to be able to work independently or even with a partner at home on your goals. We can assist with a referral to another specialist and so much more. Not only can pelvic health therapists treat the tissue issues associated with your limitations, but they can provide you with advice regarding lubrications and durable medical equipment available to improve your experience. From dilators to wands to adaptive devices such as an O-nut, your therapist can help to be sure that you know about all options of resources to help equip you with a home exercise program designed to meet your goals. They will help you with strategies for physical restorative rehabilitation, such as improving tissue mobility and reducing pain and sensitivity, or just getting comfortable with touch on your own, but also to equip you with additional adaptation ideas to meet you where you and your goals are. So if your goals include working with a partner, this may include modifying sexual positions or using devices to limit the depth of penetration. In the same way that a pelvic therapist may help someone with pelvic specific limitations, rehab specialists can help address specific physical limitations based on your specific needs and treatment history. For example, if you're having neck pain and stiffness after head and neck surgery that limits how comfortable you feel cuddling or kissing your partner, it's important to know that you can work with a therapist on your specific physical needs to maximize your function. And in addition to specific exercises for your unique situation, physical activity may improve fatigue, mood, and body image overall, which may positively influence your sexuality. A therapist can help direct you an appropriate wellness program designed to meet the recommended guidelines for survivors. The more we talk about how function relates to sexual health, the more awareness we can draw to the relationship between the two. Here are just a few examples of ways that cancer rehabilitation may support your sexual health goals other than pelvic health specific needs. If you're experiencing pain, limiting your ability to participate in preferred intimate behaviors, a therapist can help. For example, if you have shoulder pain after surgery and you're unable to hug your partner, that is important and something that can improve. Or let's say you're unable to reach a hands and knees position, which may have been your preferred sexual position previously. Or maybe instead of pain that's limiting your ability to reach hands and knees position, it's shoulder weakness or cancer-related fatigue. These are just examples of how pain or weakness may limit what you feel up to participating in. It's not uncommon to have sensitivity near surgical scars or areas treated with radiation therapy. Therapists can help you with um, feel comfortable with touch in this area and reduce the sensitivity. For example, after breast cancer, if you have sensitivity with skin-to-skin -skin contact at the chest wall, a therapist can absolutely help you with this. I mentioned some of the benefits of physical activity and exercise, but many of my patients have expressed not knowing how to safely get started. A cancer rehab therapist can help design an exercise program that is safe and specific to you so that you can still experience the benefits of exercise. No matter what your diagnosis is, each patient's needs are unique to their level of function before diagnosis, 
specific diagnosis and treatments required, and goals. You may not have sexual health goals right now, and that's okay. But we want you to know that if and when you do, it is important that you know there is support out there and how to find it if you need it. While PT and OT, we really focus on the functional and physical aspect of your sexual health. Know that there is a whole team of providers that can help you to reach your potential. And that may include sex therapists, mental health providers, your own medical team, of course. There are specialized sexual medicine providers out there too, both in the urology and gynecology spaces. Cancer rehab specialists, physical and occupational therapists, and pelvic floor therapists, as I mentioned, to name a few. If you are ready to start the conversation with your medical team or partner, but are unsure how, consider some of these examples. These are purely some ideas to get you thinking about what feels authentic and true to you and your situation. It's important to know that providers and therapists alike may have different experience in discussing sexual health. If your provider is unsure of how to assist, um, of how to assist you, ask if they can connect you with someone who can. Here are some ideas for speaking with your medical team. I have not been able to return to pain-free vaginal penetration since treatment. Would you be willing to refer me to a pelvic floor therapist for evaluation and treatment? I'm using lubrication and working with a pelvic floor therapist. Based on my medical history, are there any recommended medications, creams, or other options that may help me reach my goal of pain-free sexual health? With the current treatments that I am scheduled to receive, are there any safety considerations I should be aware of to continue to participate in safe sex? If you're already in cancer rehab or pelvic health therapy, these might be good ways to help your therapist understand your needs. I'm having difficulty facilitating and maintaining an erection. Are there things that we can incorporate into my plan of care that would help me improve this aspect of my health? Part of my goals for activities of daily living is to resume my prior sexual activities. I'm concerned about X, Y, Z. Can we ensure my exercise program is working towards return to function? And if you're wondering how to start a conversation with your partner, here's a brainstorm of some ways that may work for you. I'm not sure how I feel about sex right now, but I want to stay intimate with you. Can we talk about other ways to feel close with one another that I do feel comfortable with? My doctor mentioned that my sexual desire and abilities may change throughout treatment. I am interested in meeting with a counselor to plan for how this may affect our relationship. I hope that hearing some of these scripting ideas will help you to feel even more comfortable engaging with your medical team, therapists, and partner in conversation regarding sexual health. I know we touched on a lot of different aspects of sexual health today, and I expect you'll have further questions. So right now, while it's fresh, I encourage you to grab a piece of paper and a pen or open the notes app on your phone and write a few things down. Here are some things to consider writing. What information resonated with you today? What questions should you take to your personal medical team? Practice writing a sentence to open the conversation about sexual health and intimacy with your partner. In summary, sexual health may be impacted by your cancer experience and is something you should feel comfortable discussing with your care team and partner. There are specialists in both the rehab mental health and medical landscapes equipped to help you work towards your sexual health goals. Don't forget about us pelvic floor therapists who are specially trained to help you with pelvic specific needs. Practicing saying how you feel may help you find the words that feel most authentic to your situation and help you to have meaningful conversations with your care team and partner. Thank you so much for your time today. I hope that you feel seen and empowered as you navigate sex and cancer and know how to get the support you need should you need it when you need it.
You can find more information on our program at revitalcancerrehab.com. We hope to help you live well beyond cancer. Thank you.